Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. Now, I know it has been a bit of a minute, but we're here now. And I just want to... Today, I want to critique the Terrifier after viewing what I would have done in the film personally, or in those situations, I guess, with my case, literally, right? <laughs> you know, um... Now I still have more to watch, and I will update you guys on that. I actually want to maybe kind of do that with a lot of more serial killer, psychopathic horror movie films, kind of saying what I would have done personally, and how I would have dissembled all the victims. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> but um, today... We're just going to be going over the Terrifier, okay? Starting off... Now, I know there's a whole thing with the Terrifier where he can't die, he's kind of like an unkillable demon, a little bit like Jason Voorhees. So, I don't know why he would let himself be hit and kind of tossed around a little bit, you know? Um, when that one woman comforts him, I, I thought he was giving in for a minute to, you know, kind of do what he did to that one girl with the wooden plank. I mean, he did some, you know, <laughs> Arthur Morgan uh, type of gunslinging right there. Quick, you know, pull it out, boom. You know, with that 1911. Um, which is one of actually my favorite pistols. Really effective. But, um... <clears throat> you know, I, I really did like... There should have been more of that. The surprise pistol, you know, I think that would have honestly worked in a lot of more scenes. And personally, in my experience, that would be pretty effective um, to draw that out and just watch the light go out. <laughs> but, um, you know, honestly, the Terrifier is definitely up there. You know, I really like Jason Voorhees a lot, but I think the Terrifier is going to be my number two. Now, I know there's Scream, Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger. They're all great, too, but I, I can relate a lot to the Terrifier and Jason Voorhees. They're kind of like my spirit animals, if you will. <laughs> but um, another scene is when he cuts that woman from horror underbits. All the way down to her skull. Pretty effective. I think chainsaws. All oh, another insight actually. Uh, chainsaws in general are very effective. Definitely a good horror factor. You know, I actually didn't know this, but there is a fear of blades. Some people in the world are afraid of metal that's sharp and bladed items. You know. You find yourself someone like that, take a chainsaw, or a knife, machete, hatchet, axe, whatever. <laughs> well, there was also the mace scene, when he's just, I mean, I guess it was kind of was a mace, where he was just hacking at that woman. Um, I like that too, you know, I, uh, <laughs> I actually had some experience with a mace myself. I like how they... Swing around with all the spikes. Pretty effective. But, um, I was gonna make a comparison. Uh, American Psycho. I like that movie a lot too. Very good. Um, yeah, I can really relate to Bateman there. Um, especially those little night alley walks, you know. Very, very similar as to my own. But, um, you know, the chainsaw, when he drops it on that woman, uh, you know, I mean, I, I just think that chainsaws are essentially a part of horror in every psychopathic man's dream weapon. <laughs> Look at this. Now it's not 100%, but, uh... Never mind. <laughs> I got you. But ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to go on and um, get out of here. But the Terrifier for me, he, he gets things done, but 
I think he he plays a little a little too much. Art Art the Clown. He just plays a little too much. You know, personally, I would just get in there and watch the light go out.